Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. My name is uh, my name is Ian Campbell, and I am CEO of Mission Suite. Um, and welcome to my presentation on uh, "You've Got the Lead Now What." Uh, this is a, uh, a presentation that we've created uh, that is that talks about how to get a lead to take action. <clears throat> um, excuse me. To give you a little bit of uh, background, um, give you tell you a little bit about me and why I'm qualified to be talking about what I'm talking about. Um, I, as I mentioned, I'm CEO of Mission Suite. Uh, Mission Suite is a sales and marketing automation software. Uh, it's built specifically for small and mid-market businesses. Uh, think of us like um, one of your standard, you know, Infusionsofts or uh, Salesforce, et cetera, without, uh, without necessarily the price tag. Um, we combine CRM, marketing automation, inbound lead generation, and email marketing into one system. We ref uh, refer to it as unified marketing. Um, and to uh, kind of simply put, uh, we automate lead generation and business development efforts in one system. Uh, now, I've been in marketing and sales for uh, over 15 years now. So uh, I've been doing this for a while. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. Um, I, I remember the, uh, the days before the internet was a big thing when websites were nice to have and not necessarily a need to have and uh, kind of seen through uh, the entirety of the, uh, um, the, 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 the way that the, the industry has grown and morphed over the course of the years. So I've, I've, I've seen this for a while and so hopefully I can, uh, I can be of some service here, uh, answer some questions that you might have. Um, and uh, and be available for you and, and give you some good information to walk away with. Um, just a bit of housekeeping here. Uh, we are uh, uh, able to, to take questions from uh, from the audience. So if you do have a question, uh, by all means, uh, go ahead and, uh, and, and ask that. Um, I will be addressing those towards the end of the presentation. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, after I've gone through everything here, and uh, and then we can we can t take care of those then. Um, now, first, before we get started, I've got a couple questions uh, for you, actually, and I'm going to uh, to use these as a uh, um, as polls here, uh, and you'll see uh, a pop up come up on your screen, and you can answer them or not. But uh, but I think they'd be helpful for me to uh, to to see this. Um, so, first question here, I'm going to ask is. Um, uh, I'm going to start voting on is, are you a B2B company uh, selling to business to business, or are you a B2C company selling business to consumer? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So go ahead. You'll see the, uh, you'll see the link pop up, and uh, go ahead, and, and you can start voting on either one of the two here to, to, to jump off. Uh, the reason that I'm asking this, uh, I want to make sure that you know, I want to try and tailor my presentation as best I can to uh, to to the to all of you on this call here. Um, I want to make sure that uh, that if we're you know if we're overwhelmed with business to, with with consumer products or, uh, or or business products that that we that, that we, we we can align appropriately. So it looks like the vast majority here are um, are are business to business. We've got uh, so far we've got about 71% of people. The actually even more. Um, than that, uh, focusing on business to business here. So we're going to keep this open for another uh, five seconds or so. Uh, so be sure to uh, to jump in. Um, all right, perfect. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to stop the voting on this one here. It looks like we've got about uh, uh, right now we've got 84% to uh, well eight, uh, about 80 to 80 20 right now. Uh, as, uh, as business to business over business to consumer, so we'll kind of we'll we'll, we'll target this and, uh, uh, and and focus it in on the uh, the B two B side of things. Um, but uh, I'll make sure to uh, to uh, if you have any questions or any thoughts or or anything like that that you want to talk about on the consumer side, definitely feel free to ask and uh, and we'll get those answered as well. Um, as now, the next question I have is: Are you selling products, uh, physical products, or are you selling services? <clears throat> um, and uh, and again, I want to make sure that uh, that we know. For example, I mean, obviously, I sell a service here, so uh, my calls to action and uh, conversions from marketing funnel to sales funnel are going to be different than somebody who's uh, who's fo who's selling services and doing going from uh, and, and or I'm sorry that I sell services is going to be different from somebody selling products who's just trying to get people to buy the product or to uh, or to have a a conversation in regard to a full solution. 
<clears throat> so it uh, looks like we've got some uh, some good responses here. Uh, keep them all coming. Um, you know, we've got uh, right now we're at about 70% to 30% of um, products over services. And again, we'll keep this poll open for another about uh, five seconds. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then uh, and then we'll shut it down and uh, kind of work with what we have. So, all right, excellent. So it looks like we're actually pretty close to 50/50 here uh, on uh, on products and services. Um, <clears throat> maybe leaning a little bit more towards the services end. Uh, so what I'm what I'll do is I will once again I'll focus in on. Um, on the service angle, and so I'll talk more. I'll talk primarily about services. I'll talk about um, I'll talk about you know when we'll talk about solution selling as far as products are concerned, and how to get a lead to take action on that as well. Um, but again, if you have questions about specific products, about specific uh, anything specific that you might want to uh, want, might want to talk about on the product side, please again feel free to uh, to, to ask a question, and <clears throat> excuse me, and I will I'll do my best to answer as best I can. All right, so again, this is, uh, we're talking about how we get leads to take action. Um, now, as I mentioned, I've been, you know, I've kind of been, been in this world for, for quite some time, and uh, you know, I've, I've seen kind of the way that we used to do it um, back when it was, I mean, I remember doing fax campaigns and, uh, and, and getting people to, uh, sending, a, sending a letter to a decision maker, having them circle a, Circle response and then fax, fax me back the, uh, the 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 answer um, all the way down and then through to um, uh, through to the when contact forms on websites became a thing and became a, a simple to implement and now we're kind of we're at the next step where people where we're generating leads um, uh, using content and using uh, uh, different different resources and different uh, different things to to get people to raise their hand and say yeah I want to talk to you. So how do we get a lead to, to take action? First, I want to kind of take a look at what we used to do. Um, so, if you know, I mean, if, if you guys, if anybody on, the, if everybody on the call has been has been around for a while, I'm sure this this probably sounds pretty familiar to you. Um, you know, in the in the old days, if you will, it used to be that somebody would fill out a contact form on the on your website, um, and then we'd start following up with phone calls. And it, uh, if, you know, so you'd, you'd, you'd get the contact form, you'd, you'd get the, the, the contact information, an email, maybe a little bit of a message, and then you'd start calling. And you'd leave a message and maybe you'd go through a six or seven uh, phone call uh, process and uh, just to kind of just to try to schedule an appointment and, and get somebody to talk to you. Um, problem was what I found is that unless you, unless it's, uh, well, I'm not even going to say unless, but more often than not, these phone calls would get incredibly annoying, and I can't count the number of times that decision makers told me to stop calling, which, you know, as far as my sales manager was concerned, would would uh, tell me would would mean that I was doing my job properly. Um, and, but the, uh, at the end of the day, they left these prospects and these leads not wanting to do business with my company, um, which obviously was problematic. We want to make sure, you know, everything that uh, that we're doing. We want to make sure that uh, that we're leaving a good taste in our customers' mouth, so that even if they don't, <clears throat> even if they don't want to have a conversation with us today, they might want to have a conversation with us tomorrow. You know, I mean, the old adage, "No doesn't mean no." No means not right now, right? As far as sales is concerned, I'll throw that caveat in there. Um, what we've come to learn is that just getting people to fill out the form isn't enough anymore. Just getting people to fill out that form and then starting to call them. I mean, we've all been on the, the other end of those phone calls. We've all seen and we've all experienced that, uh, that kind of annoyance from, uh, from sales guys once we fill out, fill out a form or requested some sort of, a, some sort of white paper case study or uh, um, uh, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever the, the content piece might be. So, now I want to move on to kind of what we do now and what we get to do now, rather. So because this, this sounds all too familiar to, 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 to me and to, to the vast majority of people that I talk about. <clears throat> Before we move on to, to, to what we do now, um, you know, talking about how this impacts you and uh, this slide, uh, this slide is important because it does, it kind of shows you, it talks, it talks a little bit about kind of the, 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 
results of this kind of annoyance, right? I mean, you're getting these leads, you're getting people to fill out the contact form, but they're not necessarily qualified. You don't know if they're qualified or not, right? I mean, you could be it could, you could be selling to hospitals and uh, and get somebody from a hospital, but it could be the could be the janitor who's uh, who's who's filling out the form because he's interested in the topic. Um, you know, you're risk turning the qualified leads away, and your closing ratio ratio just isn't as high as it should be. And what's worse is that at the end of the day, you're losing money, right? I mean, if you're, you're in sales to make money, we're in business to make money, it doesn't matter if you're a salesperson, a marketing person, or the business owner themselves, you know, you want to be there, to, you're there to make money. And these, this old style of lead generation and lead follow-up um, to get these people to take action is, is, is at the end of the day of costing you money. So now let's move on to what we get to do now. Because what if things were to change? What if things, what, what if the way that we started interact, we were interacting with our leads were to completely change? Well, now we get to nurture new leads, to make a warm lead even warmer. So if they fill out, if they, they've they requested a, a piece of content from your website, yeah, sure, they're warm. You know, they, they've, they've, they've shown you that they're on your website, they've shown you that they're interested in what you're talking about, but now we get to make them warmer. And now I'm not saying that if somebody fills out the contact us form on your website that you shouldn't touch base with them immediately, but we've learned that when someone downloads content from your website, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're ready for a chat. It doesn't necessarily mean that they want to talk to you. It just means that they're interested in the topic, <clears throat> not necessarily talking to you to figure out how to, how to solve it. So what's, what else do we get to do? We get to show our expertise and, the rele and our relevancy before calling somebody. Um, we get to show them that, we, that, that we're worth having a conversation with. And finally, leading to convincing them that they want to talk to you about the topic that they're reaching out, that they're researching before talking to anyone else. If they've, <clears throat> excuse me, chances are that if they have, um, if they've downloaded a piece of contact from, content from your website or from a landing page that you've got, that they want, to, that, they're, that they're interested in the topic, that they're researching the topic, that they're doing that, that, they're, that, they're doing that kind of early, early stage uh, research. So they've decided that they've wanted to learn more about it. So now we're able to make the case that you're the one that they should be talking to to learn more about it. <clears throat> so what does this lead to? It leads to a higher closing ratio. At the end of the day, you're going to close more deals because when if you're not pushing people away, if you're uh, if you're if you're gently nurturing them into uh, into into having a conversation with you, your closing ratio gets to go up, and that's a good thing for everybody involved. So how do we do all of this? Um, now, automation is the simple answer, and uh, uh, so quickly we'll we'll talk uh, talk quickly about automation here. Now, some call it marketing automation, some call it inbound marketing. As I mentioned, we call it unified marketing. It goes by a lot of different names. And anybody that you talk to, any of our, any of any software providers, probably going to have their own reference term for it. I like unified marketing because this really does this this process that we send people through really kind of brings together the 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 the, the ideas of email marketing, of lead nurturing, of marketing automation, and of sales, of course, right? Because at the end of the day, someone's got to talk to somebody to get, to, 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 to get them to take action, especially if we're talking about a B2B purchase that is, uh, that is either service-based or a larger product-based. If we're talking about smaller products, then, of course, you know, it's a little bit easier to get people to take action without necessarily having a conversation with you. But if what you're, if what you're looking for are large dollar orders, then we want to make sure, <clears throat> we want to make sure that, uh, that we're, we're, we're getting to the right people and that, that we're having a conversation with them. So, but however you want to define it, what we're able to do is we're able to create a system that can automatically follow up on your behalf and show that expertise and relevancy before you even ask for a follow-up conversation. So typically, and again, kind of referencing the old way of doing things, <clears throat> excuse me, referencing the old way of doing things, we would have to make the case that we're worth talking to. Somebody fills out a contact form, so we, or we call somebody, we have to make the case that we are worth talking to, that, that you can rely on us because we're trustworthy, because we're relevant to your business, because we have the expertise that you're looking for. Now we have an, we have an ability to, to, to follow up in a way that, uh, and automatically, uh, that that does that for us. 
So in my sales training, uh, in any sales training for that matter, we're all, we're all, we were always taught, and now I teach, and I'm sure that, that, that many of you do as well, that we have to earn the right to ask for the sale, right? And now I would argue that the same holds true here, right? That taking a lead from, one, from, from just being, a, just being a, a warmish lead and getting them to a, to a one-on-one conversation, you need to earn the right to do that. You need to earn the right to ask for that. And in order to do so, we need to show them that we're going to deliver and that we have the knowledge that they're looking for. <clears throat> so before we move on, I want to do another, I'll do a couple more, I got a couple more questions for you here. Now, first, first things first, I want to know, are you familiar with inbound marketing and or automated marketing, anything like that? So you've got the poll up on your screen again. So go ahead and, and start answering for me. I want to know, kind of, I want to get a, get a feel for for who's already, who's kind of got an idea on this, and uh, and you know if we're, where we're starting from here. <clears throat> so go ahead and uh, if if you can answer the questions here. We've got uh, we'll keep this open for about thirty seconds. And uh, um, and see kind of see where we all stand here. So go ahead. Some people are. Are responding here. It looks like we're so far we're at about 50/50. Um, all right, a couple more people coming in. Looks like uh, looks like we've got a, a bunch of people who are actually who it's a, a few more who are um, familiar with the concept and uh, than those that aren't so far. We'll keep it open for just a few more seconds here. <clears throat> all right, so oh, well, it looks like we're so we'll say we're at about 50/50 right now. And I'll, uh, I'll stop the voting here. We've got a few more. So it looks like we've got a few more people who, in fact, are not familiar with the concept of, auto, of inbound marketing or automated marketing um, than those that are, which is uh, which is great. So we'll talk. We'll kind of uh, dial in a little bit more on that. And so uh, now I've got and just a question for those of you who are familiar with it. Um, do you have a plan implemented, or are you plan uh, that you're planning to implement? For inbound or automated marketing right now, I'm curious because I'm, uh, I want to know. We're, we're going to talk through some of uh, a few things here on some best practices for uh, for inbound and automated marketing, and so I want to know who's already got a plan, who's thinking about that they're that they've already implemented or that they that they still want to. So we've got about 30 more seconds. <clears throat> so go ahead and uh, um, and keep uh, keep responding here. So it looks like we've got about two-thirds that don't have a plan so far and about a third that do, um, which is changing as we speak. So this is always interesting to doing these live calls on these polls. They're, uh, they're always fascinating. So um, looks like we're at about 70-30, um, favoring those that don't have a plan yet um, uh, to those that do. And so, okay, so... I'll give it, a, give it a couple more seconds here and stop the voting now. So it looks like the majority of you don't have a plan. Some of you do have a plan that, you, that you're implementing. Um, and so we'll move on and just to kind of assume, uh, to, to focusing uh, on those that, uh, that focusing the conversation around kind of creating a plan for your first time maybe. And, uh, and those of you that do have a plan, um, you know, maybe you can pull some insights from the stuff that, uh, from the stuff that we're talking about here. And uh, if not, we can always, you know, again, if you've got questions about specific best practices, anything specific that you want to talk about, please, uh, by all means, jump in and use and do questions from and, and uh, ask questions, and we'll uh, we'll respond to those as best we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my process. Um, I'm going to show you the process that I use and that I implement for my clients every day. Um, to automate the follow-up for leads and to get them to move from uh, one from the from the marketing funnel, if you will, to the sales funnel. And now, just to uh, and this is actually an aside. I don't have a slide on this, but um, the marketing funnel basically uh, the, there's a the difference between the marketing and the sales funnel. Just for if if, if any of you don't know, um, the difference between the marketing and the sales funnel. The marketing funnel is is essentially the the way that we we pull the lead in. And we can the way that we qualify the lead. So, marketing funnel, for example, can consist of everything from uh, top level 
uh, you know, let's say at the top you've got your landing page and you're downloading some sort of content and then somebody and then they go to the next step, which is they enter a survey or they, you know, uh, or they click on a link to, um, to, 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 to have a conversation with you. Um, that's the, that's kind of the, those are the marketing, that's the marketing funnel steps. And then they jump when they, when it then moves over to the sales funnel, which is when the sales team typically takes it over. And the sales funnel, as we as we've kind of been uh, um, educated on uh, historically, uh, focuses in on <clears throat> excuse me focuses in on um, the different steps of the sales process. So from new lead, from qualified lead, uh, down to uh, to the next step of first conversation, to the next step of you know uh, uh, the um, the proposal to the uh, the needs analysis, to the proposal, to the negotiation, to the closing, etc. Right. So. Moving people from the marketing funnel into the sales funnel, that key space there, that's the place in which we need to get, we need to make people take action. We need to encourage people to take action. And that's what people, that's what we talk about when we talk about nurturing and we talk about that unified marketing aspect because we have the ability now to automate that process and move people from one step to another. So I'm going to show you this five email follow up sequence that I put together. And now, Obviously, I use my own software for this, as, as I'm sure you would expect. But there are plenty of different tools out there that you can use to that you can use to do this. And for that matter, you can. I mean, if you don't have a high volume sales process, you're not and you're not terribly worried about scalability. You can even just use your Outlook or your Gmail or what have you, right? I mean, create these follow up templates that uh, that that you're utilizing or that, that you want to, that you want to utilize and, and, and send those out, save them as templates and you can just kind of keep sending them out every time you get a new lead, every time you get a, a new, new lead coming in from, uh, from your website or from, from social media, what have you. Right. <clears throat> so you can set these up. You, I mean, I think it's better to use the system uh, as I'm sure it doesn't surprise you, but, uh, but it's, you don't necessarily need a separate platform. You can do it on your own if you want to. It's a bit more cumbersome, but it, but at the end of the day, whatever's going to work for you is the best thing to do, is the best way to do it. <clears throat> and so, irrespective of what you're using, do something. Is I guess is, is my is my core message of this piece here. So this five email follow up sequence that I put that I put together, it's focused on doing five on, obviously on doing five things. The the first thing is establishing relevancy. We want to make we want to show people that we're that, that were relevant to, to them and that we have the, we have the information that they're looking for. It shows expertise. It positions uh, the goal of your campaign or the goal of your, uh, of, of this marketing funnel as the next logical step in their, uh, in their education process. It asks them to take action and salesperson after salesperson after salesperson has, uh, has, has had to be, has had to be taught this. And frankly, marketing people do too, because, in marketing, we, it, it, I mean, we talk about our calls to action all the time. We talk about all this stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't ask them to take action, you don't get what you don't ask for. So if you don't ask them to take action, they're, not, they're probably not going to take action unless they're super motivated. But the super motivated ones are already going to be contacting you, right? This isn't necessarily something for the super motivated. It's, it's something for the, uh, for, for the, for the, 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 the on-the-fencers. And then finally, if they don't respond, it's, it helps you sign off gracefully. So I'm going to take you through this, uh, this, this sequence uh, quickly here. Um, not too quickly, but uh, we'll, we'll go through it. And again, any questions that come up, uh, feel free to ask, and we'll address them at the end. Um, so email number one in getting people and getting a lead to take action. Now, the purpose of this email is to establish the relevancy and build that trust with your lead. Now, I've put, uh, included the key things on the slide here, but we want to make sure that we recap why we're connecting with them. And in essence, hey, you asked for this, now I'm giving it to you. Um, you want to provide useful content, which of course includes um, the, third, uh, the third item here is giving them what they ask for. If they ask for a template, you know, in my case, if they ask for a template on inbound marketing, but I give them a list of 20 things that they can be automating, they're not going to be t terribly happy with me, right? And I've lost the lead. <laughs> but if you're giving them what they've asked for, that if they, I'm giving them the inbound marketing template that they asked for originally, then uh, then it's it's um, it's helping them get set up. Um, so, but that's on, on top of that, providing useful content. So, to, the top five most 
uh, viewed blog articles or, the t or five helpful articles on whatever, right? I mean, so find some more useful content. Give them more than they want it. Give them more than they ask for. Make sure that it's relevant, but give them more than they ask for. Finally, the PS line. Now, PS lines are often the highest converting lines in an email. And similarly, and when, when it comes to direct mail or letter marketing, uh, it's the same thing there, right? P these PS lines, there's a reason that a lot of those old sales uh, letters that we used to get had PS, PPS, PPPS, because that, those are the things that we, all, that we always tend to look towards. As we, we have the tendency to move to, to move to the end of the page. And so this, this gives them uh, a simple conversion. Now, in this step, in, the, in that first step, you don't want to be too presumptive. First, I like to give them the option, hey, if you'd like to connect, this is how to do so. You know, click here to go to my booking calendar, and, you can, and we can talk more. Email number two is, uh, is, this, is the expertise email. Now, this is where you're going to show your expertise. You're going to provide more resources. Um, so you're, uh, uh, and the, the goal here is to connect your company directly and explicitly with the topic that the leader is researching. So, for example, using data to show uh, expertise in the field. You know, according to a well-respected research firm, 82% of people say statistics give them confidence, right? Something like that. Uh, find something that, that that's specific to you and specific to your <clears throat> excuse me specific to your uh, to your business and your offer and, uh, and 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 focus in on it. But then and this is more and this is actually just equally as important. But offer some sort of premium content. Give them something else. Right. We live in an age where people want where people are are kind of craving more information. They want more and more and more and more and more. So give them more. Right. Give them something else. For example. Again, I, this, the, this inbound marketing campaign worksheet that, I, that I've created here, um, I offer that as, the, as the, the download, and I give them that in the first email. But in my second email, I put together, I offer the email templates that I'm, and I'm actually walking through right now. And they're uh, more in-depth than we have time to go into right now. But, uh, but we have that offer. We have that, that, uh, that ability to, to give them that. So I'm able to say, hey, here's the first thing, and here's something else that, that relates to it, and that will help you be, be more successful with it. And then finally, again, a PS line. Not, pre not too presumptive, but make sure that it ties the original content and the premium content to the idea that a conversation with you or your company can help them solve their problem. Because at the end of the day, that's what they're trying to figure out how to do. They're trying to figure out how to solve their problem. So email number three we're going to move uh, is our positioning email. And now this is the first email with the, that has the primary goal of converting. Right? So the past the past two emails uh, their primary goal was to share content, was to 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 kind of build that that credibility if you will. Now this is a this is a a, a conversion email. But it's not an explicit one. Right? So we want to make sure that the, 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 the goal of this email here positions your, your campaign, the goal of your campaign, whether you know, in my case it's a scheduled conversation, in your case it might be some sort of a meeting. Now personally, I like to keep, it, I like to keep these goals uh, uh, non-intrusive. So maybe asking for a meeting is a little bit much because people are decision makers are busy and they um, and you know and they don't necessarily have time to sit down with everybody that that reaches out to them. But uh, uh, so maybe instead of a meeting, it's a phone call or maybe it's a, uh, it's a web conference or you know a 15 minute whatever the case might be. <clears throat> uh, make it clear that their next step in their education process. Is, a, is some sort of a conversation with you or whatever the goal of your campaign is, right? If you're trying to sell leather belts, maybe the, the goal you know, probably isn't just keeping your pants up, but maybe it's you know, looking great and feeling great w uh, with a fashionable belt, so click here to shop now, that kind of a thing. If it's, uh, uh, and again, if, if we're talking about, a, um, if we're talking about a, a large product sale, then, we're, then if, you know, maybe you're selling network gear to enterprise companies, right? Servers and switches and computers and whatnot. Well, then maybe your first, the first conversation is actually a sit-down meeting because you need to do that. But whatever that, that, whatever that is, make, the goal, make, the goal, make it clear that there's, that there's a connection there. Now, with this one, I mean, you want to make sure that, uh, uh, that you're also making them feel comfortable to, to reach out to you. 
right? So people have natural concerns. They don't know the information. They, they have questions that they don't want to share. They don't want to, they don't want to seem like they don't understand um, to, to, to another person. They don't mind downloading information, but they don't want to, they don't want to look dumb. So, you know, it's, it's natural to have questions. Just wanted to share the information that we've learned over 20 years in our industry. And this will be a no pressure conversation because I don't want to be sold. There, we know you don't want to be sold, those types of things. And again, and so, and now for on, on email three here on our conversion emails, and this, this will go for the next one as well, we don't want to use a PS line because the past two, you know, in, in these past two emails, the PS line is conversion, right? It's focused on conversion. This, these emails are all about conversion. So we don't want to confuse the, uh, we don't want to confuse the message here. We want to make sure that we're, that we're specific, that we're dialed in and we, may, and we know exactly what, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that we know exactly what, what we're, what we're looking for, what, what, what we want them to do and that they know exactly what, we, what they want, what we want them to do. So moving on to email number four. Now this is the explicit conversion email. Right. This is the sales email. This is the one where you say, hey, listen, you know, you're you're looking for I mean, nicer than this, obviously, but you're looking for information on X, Y, Z. You're looking for information on the best tablets uh, to buy in bulk for your school or you're looking for information on the best uh, the best wood to build your custom tables with whatever that whatever that is. Right. Whatever whatever that 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 initial outreach was. We want to make sure we want to tell them we are the best ones to provide that to you. We are we're we're specifically you know we are we're the, we're the right fit for you. We're the ones that are going to have the answers to the questions. We're going to have the quality product. We're going to everything that we believe when we go into selling a product. This is our sales email, right? <clears throat> so make sure that we're using a call to action that's specific to the action that you want this lead to take. So for example, if we're you know again if it's a, if it's a, a conference call, if it's a webinar, if it's a um, if it's a <clears throat> excuse me, if it's a conference call, it's a webinar, it's a, it's a shop now, it's a meeting, it's coffee, whatever the case might be, make sure that that, 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 question, that that call to action is in there. And again, no PS line here. You want to keep the focus on the main conversion piece. And now last and not least, last but, but not least, is the graceful exit. Now, if they've gotten to this point, if they've gotten to, your, to our fifth email and they haven't converted, they haven't reached out to you, they haven't, uh, they, you know, they haven't, they haven't called back or what have you, <clears throat> um, the chances are they're probably not going to. And, you know, I, and, I, and I, uh, I should probably mention as well that in, in between some of these emails, maybe towards the end of the, the email, the end of the conversion cycle of the emails, we can pepper in a phone call or we can pepper in something else in, but, um, but, if they if they get to the point where you're at email five and or that that this this final step of the email process and they still have not converted they still haven't they touch touch base chances they're more it's more than likely that they're not going to and that's okay right we all know we've been in business for anybody who's been in business for a while knows that you know you're not going to win them all right I mean it's there's there's a million different reasons why but they don't you don't necessarily need to just bow out and 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 close out right. We want to make sure that you know you're, you're, they know that uh, that they that they know that you won't continue reaching out. You don't want to be a pest, right? And and so and let them know. Listen, I'm not going to keep reaching out to you. I don't want to be a pest. I don't want to keep bothering you. So I'm not going to keep reaching out to you. And to be honest, as an aside, this action alone, this statement alone, may create such a may create enough of a fear of loss of of a conversation with you that may get them to reach out in and of itself, right? Um, but let them know. Let, just let them know that, that you're not going to keep reaching out. Let them know. Wish them luck, and then let them know they can still. You know, I mean, my, you know, the, the the information that's in my brain isn't available only to people that sit down with me. You can go to our blog or go to, you know, subscribe to our newsletter or what have you, and uh, and 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 you know, and and send them that way. That way, you can kind of keep them in your world, which is obviously a great benefit to you. <clears throat> and finally, this is where we're going to reintroduce the PS line. Um, because we're not convert, we're not. This isn't an email that focuses on conversion, so we're going to reintroduce this PS line, and we're going to let them know how that they, how they can get in touch with you <clears throat> in the future if they ever decide that they want to learn more. Obviously, you've got a sort of, you know, I'm sure you've got a a, a a signature line that has your phone number and email address and whatnot. 
but uh, you know, give them access to your booking calendar. Give them access to, um, to you know, give them a, a, an explicit call to action that they can that they can leverage at some time in the future if they come back through and search for this email. Because it, it, to be honest, it does happen every now and then, right? Again, no doesn't necessarily mean no in sales. No means not right now. <clears throat> so maybe you know, maybe at another time. So don't sign them off. Don't knock them out. Just uh, just you know, the goal here is to just be graceful, be gracious, and bow out. <clears throat> so with that, I would like to, uh, I'd like to take some questions here. Um, you know, to, uh, speaking of a graceful exit, this will kind of uh, uh, spawn, uh, uh, spawn my own here. So I'll take a few questions here and we'll, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and we will uh, start going from here. So we've got a couple of questions that are already being asked. And uh, like I say, if, if, uh, if any of, if any others pop up, then we can, um, then we can drop them here. So uh, first question is, have you noticed a difference in lead generation between plain text emails and newsletter emails? <clears throat> so for me, I like both. I like to, I like to do a blend. With, uh, with a lot of the campaigning that I do um, you know, for, uh, personally and a lot of the campaigning that I do for, for some of my clients here, um, I, I tend to, uh, so I'll, I'll kind of I'll phase this out and, you know, so I'll do email one, two, three, four, and then do a phone call and then do the email number five. Now, the best way, as far as getting a lead to take action, I've noticed that plain text emails are a lot easier. So not, ha so just writing an email that looks like it came from your Outlook or from Gmail is is a lot more effective than uh, than a newsletter style email that looks like it was branded and looks like it's a marketing email because people don't necessarily need to respond to marketing emails, but they're more you know they're they're much more likely to uh, <clears throat> excuse me they're much more likely to connect with you for uh, via a um, via a, a plain text email because it looks like it came from you and I grant you that that all these systems. You know, well, I'll say 99% of these systems are going to have the unsubscribe and the the footer language that's all that's all required for can spam. But uh, but there are ways. You know, you can you know, kind of uh, drop that down a few a few pegs to to uh, so that it doesn't so that it's not as prevalent and whatnot. So then then to make it look like it actually came from you. So, um, so as far, but as far as lead generation is concerned, oh, and at the, at the end of the, and this is where kind of the end of the campaign runs, because after those five emails, then maybe I'll, you know, if, if they've, if they bounced over to the, uh, to my newsletter list, um, then they're getting a, a newsletter style email that has a, uh, that has a note with dear first name. I, you know, we, we had a conversation or we were emailing back and forth about uh, about you know whatever x y about this topic and i thought that you might be interested in these two this blog article that we just wrote or these types of things if you have um the, you know certain certain platforms will allow you to um to pull in an rss feed that can that can even automate that as well which is incredibly helpful because uh, you're able to to push out emails and um uh, push out blog articles without necessarily having to create a new newsletter every time so um, another question that I have here uh, is, are you going to have example templates for us to see under the attachments at the end of this presentation? Um, so absolutely, I can cert what I can do is um, I can actually uh, upload my template here, um, uh, and I will figure out how to do that, as <laughs> but I can, uh, I can upload a, 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 a Word doc here that will allow and that that'll show you kind of how to set up bound marketing and I can you know kind of those two documents that I mentioned before right the worksheet of how to set up a, a campaign and then uh, the, the email templates that I use uh, that that I you know that that I have here um, that I use to, uh, to 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 create these emails um, so absolutely and, and as soon as I you know as soon as I get over my my technical um, deficiency here. Uh, I will uh, I will certainly get those um, those uploaded. Um, next question I have here is in B two B, do you have sales send out from their email addresses to make it more personal? Absolutely, absolutely, hands down. Um, you know, again, because <clears throat> at the end of the day, we're not we're not you don't buy from a company, you buy from a person, right? And likewise, you don't sell to a company, you sell to a person. 
So personalization is huge, is such an important thing. And the ability to, you know, dear first name or Mr. Last name or, you know, title, last, what I, you know, whatever. I mean, the ability to, to, to add those types of personalizations in there is, is, a, is a huge step because it, it connects, it creates that, that kind of, um, that kind of uh, connection there, right? Now, imagine if that, if that dear first name or Mr. So-and-so came from, ABC Corp, as opposed to John Smith at abccorp.com, right? I mean, it becomes a lot more, you know, you, you're, you're, you know who these people are, and you can kind of, you can, you can put a, put a name to the company, um, and it makes it, it makes it a lot more impactful, a lot more impactful. So, <clears throat> um, all right, excellent. Now, with that, um, those are the, the last question. That, that's, those are the only few questions that I have here right now. Um, I will get, uh, take a few more seconds and a lot, and just to, if we have any other questions that uh, that we have here, um, it does not look like it. Uh, so <clears throat> to wrap up, I'm just going to say thank you very much. I, I very much appreciate you uh, you joining me here today. Um, my contact information is on screen there. And uh, you've got my name, phone number, email address, and, uh, and website there. That uh, and my website is also in the attachment um, uh, area on this too. So um, you know you've got all this information uh, that you can feel free to reach out for me if you have any questions. If there's anything that I can uh, that I can do to to help you out um, and help you figure all this stuff out, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you. Um, but uh, but yeah. And other than that, like I said, I will figure out how to how to operate these attachments. Uh, section here. And, oh, how do I, so? One last one last question. It looks like how did I arrive at the magic number of five emails? Is it based on data? Honestly, it might be. I don't know. It's not based on data for me. Um, basically, it's uh, uh, what I did. I kind of I I, I looked at um, I looked at what I had, the different the different types of things that I had, and the different types of conversations that I was having along the way to get people to qualify. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So when I w you know, back when I would, when I was starting to do this, um, before I started uh, creating the, the automated system, um, <clears throat> excuse me, or before I started uh, implementing my automated system, rather, uh, what I would do is I, you know, I was the, I was the classic guy. I would, I would have the, you fill out the contact form and then I would answer any questions that came up, et cetera. Um, and uh, it got to a point where uh, where I realized I was having the same conversations over and over again, right? So I'd give somebody an inbound marketing template, and then I'd call them to follow up afterwards, and then they'd ask me, well, what sort of, uh, you, what, I mean, do you, do you do specific emails? And I'd say, yeah, I do, actually. Let me send you some emails. That, uh, let me send you a template that I use to, to create emails for my clients. And then I realized that, okay, that would be, be a good next step. And the third one was, uh, <clears throat> was kind of a um, – a uh, what which what should I say? It was just like I said, it was just kind of a logical next step that it was. Hey, you have more. You've here's this is what you've been looking at. This is what you've been been working on and and researching. Here's some information. Here's some more information that uh, that I can give you. And you know, you want to have a conversation. And then finally, you realize that you know. So those kind. Of, it was it was just the, the natural progression of me qualifying my <clears throat> excuse me of me qualifying my. Um, my prospects and my leads that I just kind of that I was that I kept going through the same things over and over and over again. So finally, I just decided, well, let's let's let, why don't I automate this? Um, and this will have to be the last question because we're at the 45 minute mark. Um, but at what point are customers statistically most likely to respond? What I've seen in my world, uh, just in my stuff, is that they're most likely to respond at either three or four. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, well, I guess that's not that's not technically true. I'd say that that that, that we that we see a lot who respond after uh, we see some that respond after email one. Um, we see a, a few more, and I don't have specific numbers on the on this on these. This is just this is really anecdotal, but um, but I'd, I'd, I'd say that we see maybe twenty percent will will respond after email one. Um, maybe thirty percent will respond after email three. Another 30% respond after email four, and then um, you know, so and then uh, uh, the rest may or may not respond uh, after 
you know, at, at, at the in, in the other areas. But uh, but the vast majority are going to come at the at the at, at either three or four, um, and uh, and then but you'll get you'll get a, a, a decent number that that will probably respond after your first one as well, just because if they you know a lot of people are still saying that if when they when they download something they want the information from you so um but yeah so that is going to have to be the last question uh because we are wrapping up here um and we are coming to the to the end of my time uh but i i do like i say i appreciate your uh, your time here i appreciate the questions i appreciate the feedback and uh, the information here so um like i said i will um i'll touch base with support and find out how i can get you those uh, those attachments and then we'll uh and like i say if any any questions come up anything else that i can that i can help you uh, uh identify or uh, or answer uh, by all means my like i said my contact information is here so Thank you all so very much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. A B2C company selling business to consumer. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So go ahead. You'll see the uh, you'll see the link pop up, and uh, go ahead and, and you can start voting on either one of the two here to to, to jump off. Uh, the reason that I'm asking this, uh, I want to make sure that. You know, I want to try and tailor my presentation as best I can to uh, to to the to, the, to the, all of you on this call here. Um, I want to make sure that uh, that if we're you know if we're overwhelmed with business to, with with consumer products or uh, or or business products that that we that, that we, we we can align appropriately. So it looks like the vast majority here are um, are are business to business. We've got the, so far we've got about 71% of people. The actually even more. Um, than that, uh, focusing on business to business here. So we're going to keep this open for another uh, five seconds or so. Uh, so be sure to uh, to jump in. Um, all right, perfect. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to stop the voting on this one here. It looks like we've got about uh, uh, right now we've got 84% to uh, well eight, uh, about 80 to 80 20 right now. Uh, as, uh, as business to business over business to consumer, so we'll kind of we'll, we'll, we'll target this and, uh, and and focus it in on the uh, the B two B side of things. Um, but uh, I'll make sure to uh, to uh, if you have any questions or any thoughts or or anything like that that you want to talk about on the consumer side, definitely feel free to ask and uh, and we'll get those answered as well. Um, as now, the next question I have is: Are you selling products, uh, physical products, or are you selling services? <clears throat> um, and uh, and again, I want to make sure that email marketing into one system. We ref uh, refer to it as unified marketing. Um, and to uh, kind of simply put, uh, we automate lead generation and business development efforts in one system. Uh, now, I've been in marketing and sales for uh, over 15 years now. So uh, I've been doing this for a while. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. Um, I, I remember uh, the days before the internet was a big thing when websites were nice to have and not necessarily a need to have and uh, kind of seen through uh, the entirety of the, uh, um, the, 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 the way that the, the industry has grown and morphed over the course of the years. So I've, I've, I've seen this for a while and so hopefully I can, uh, I can be of some service here, uh, answer some questions that you might have. Um, and uh, and be available for you and, and give you some good information to walk away with. Um, just a bit of housekeeping here. Uh, we are uh, uh, able to, to take questions from uh, from the audience. So if you do have a question, uh, by all means, uh, go ahead and, uh, and and ask that. Um, I will be addressing those towards the end of the presentation. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. After I've gone through everything here, and uh, and then we can we can t take care of those then. Um, now, first, before we get started, I've got a couple questions uh, for you, actually, and I'm going to uh, to use these as a uh, um, as polls here, uh, and you'll see uh, a pop up come up on your screen, and you can answer them or not. But uh, but I think they'd be helpful for me to uh, to to see this. Um, so, first question here, I'm going to ask is. Um, uh, I'm going to start voting on is are you a B2B company uh, selling to business to business or are you a 
Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. My name is uh, my name is Ian Campbell, and I am CEO of Mission Suite. Um, and welcome to my presentation on uh, "You've Got the Lead Now What." Uh, this is a, uh, a presentation that we've created uh, that is that talks about how to get a lead to take action. <clears throat> um, excuse me. To give you a little bit of uh, background, um, give you tell you a little bit about me and why I'm qualified to be talking about what I'm talking about. Um, I, as I mentioned, I'm CEO of Mission Suite. Uh, Mission Suite is a sales and marketing automation software. Uh, it's built specifically for small and mid-market businesses. Uh, think of us like um, one of your standard, you know, Infusionsofts or uh, Salesforce, et cetera, without, uh, without necessarily the price tag. Um, we combine CRM, marketing automation, inbound lead generation, and 